Now this looks like the kind of trailers that I saw a lot, or, or the beginning stage of a lot of the trailers I saw when I was a kid. Correct. These are, we call these canned hams because mm -hmm. they look like a canned ham on its side, flat sides and a, and a rounded top. Very easy, you don't have any compound curves to, to make, so they're simple, almost like a kit. This, however, is made of masonite. It's a 1937 air float. A gentleman named Omar Suttles started a trailer company in the 30s, and uh, he went with a very simple design. Porthole windows, beautiful aesthetic, but uh, these are functioning windows. They, the glass, you turn these and pop that out uh -huh. to get air in there. Uh -huh. What do you do with these? <laughs> Break them. <laughs> exactly. So you, you've mentioned masonite a couple times. Yes, was now it, was uh, it, what happened was the war was getting to come on mm -hmm. and so aluminum was getting scarce. Mm -hmm. uh, wood, metal products were very scarce. There was no chroming or anything like that. So they came up with masonite to use. They're still wood framed and then they, they put masonite on, which is just like a cardboard. But the paint was the seal. If, as long as you kept paint on it, it was masonite okay. would stay okay. If it, if it got a crack anywhere, it would turn into a sponge and explode. Mm -hmm. Kind of like what happened to this trailer. Yeah. Right? Well, let's step into this and okay. see what we find. Okay. Yeah, this does definitely look like what I'm used to as a kid. I, one thing I noticed, though, is uh, I'm not that tall, and, and I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm hitting the road. Yeah, that, I, I think people were shorter back in the, in the 30s they were. and 40s. This, uh, this is your basic trailer. Like I said, uh, this is masonite also. There's no aluminum or stainless steel in this. It's, you, know, you have your, definitely your Coleman camp stove but it's all plywood, no exotic woods either. They painted it with lacquer paint. So they were, they were more your basic basic uh, materials to use this. This is the outside. There is no insulation or any inner wall in this trailer either. So Omar Suttles was uh, more of a frugal type. This was more for your, for your, um, your regular the, the entry type. level yes, type. Exactly, yeah. of trailer, right. Correct. So with no insulation, however, the space being so small, probably didn't take much to heat these up. No, you didn't have much. You can, you can either run a burner on the stove, and that would just to keep it going on your 50s trailers. Believe it or not, the pilot, that little pilot sometimes can keep it warm enough in there for you. You turn one burner on and put it on real low. As so long as you have a little ventilation, you're correct. okay. Correct. Always there's a vent over the stove to vent off. Mm -hmm. Bedding on the front here, this folds into a bunk bed up here. This so, so mom and dad up. and a couple of kids could yeah, take off on this Yeah, mom and dad over here in the seat that folds down into a full-size bed. There's always a full-size bed, never queen. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then two little bunk beds for the kids. In 1952, 53, this gentleman was an aerospace engineer, and he started playing with fiberglass. This is the first fiberglass trailer. And this is a tent trailer, it's just like your pop-up tents that would go. So you'd uh, have it down in the down position and drive to where you're going, put a little crank in the front and crank it up and open it up into a tent trailer and your tent siding on this, on this thing here. So from the time you pull into the campsite till you can use this, it's set up, how long did that take? Okay, unlike the other one from the 20s, it mm -hmm. took two hours. This took a matter of maybe 15 minutes. You'd, uh, the, the canvas would be attached to it already and you just pop the little hatches, crank it up, open it up, and then put your, uh, your stove on the table and everything else. I noticed it has 54 Ford taillights. Correct. Uh, they, I guess that was the, the, the taillight he opted for. Probably Ford sold accessories and he bought those pieces. Now Ford did make a, an accessory to something like this that was a fiberglass trailer with a boat on top of it. And the they boat was actually the roof on that. Correct, yeah. you take the boat off, put it on, then there was a little canvas top so you could go in and sleep okay. and you're out of the elements also. Okay. Well, I saw something over here in the museum that looks pretty cool. Let's take Let's a look at it. Let's go take a peek. Pretty classy looking rig you have here. Yeah, this is a, a 1937 Pierce Arrow. Made by Pierce Arrow. Pierce Arrow, the motor car company. They figured this trailer was going to save their company. In um, 1936, they were right on the verge of bankruptcy, and uh, the trailer craze was on, so they built this uh, Pierce Arrow trailer. And My memory serves me correct, it didn't save them. No, it did yeah. not save them. They made it for one year and they went bankrupt right after that. Was it unusual? I, I haven't seen, I, I'm no expert in old trailers, but I haven't seen many old trailers that are anything but polished aluminum or painted silver masonite or maybe the, the 50s era with the, the pinks and the, the black, you know, the, the striping and stuff like that. This, this seems pretty unusual being a dark, classy color like this. Correct. Um, most of your trailers um, were painted, believe it or not. The um, Airstream was the, was, and the Bolus, uh, actually the Bolus was the predecessor to the Airstream. 
but the Airstream was your um, was your ma mainly your first aluminum silver trailer. Um, paint was a sealant, and that's what they used as part of the seal on these trailers. So paint was actually put on most of the trailers. You were telling me that in the, the world of Airstreams, as far as people that appreciate restorations, these this is the one to have. Yeah, the, the, um, the bubble. This is the smallest Airstream that uh, they made. It's a 12 foot long little bubble and it's a 1952. Uh, anybody that's into Airstream trailers wants this trailer. And you said it's any condition. Huh. You said it's just a thousand pounds. So. Yeah, they, they're they're very light, very light, and uh, the um, they tow behind any vehicle. You can pull it with uh, any little car. And then uh, Buck Rogers. I mean, wow! Look at this. Yeah, this is a 1935 Golden Palace. This one eludes us. We um, the only reason why we know it's a Golden Palace is because it has a nameplate on it. We haven't found any brochures or any kind of research. I found a picture of one, so we don't know how many of these were made. Um, this trailer is going to definitely get a restoration in the next uh, few months. It's my own personal one. I'm going to do a whole copper interior in this. It has kind of a gypsy look to it. Yeah, kind of like a caravan type uh, for the old uh, carnival type. Uh. Steve and I saw this and this is just too cool. Why don't you show the viewers what this is? Well, this actually is a sink and um, your old trains and boats would have something like this or a Pullman car in a trailer. You, um, you pull this down out of the corner when there's a small room. You'd fill the bowl up with water, wash your face in it. There's a little soap dish dispenser or soap dish actually that held the soap. And when you were done, you'd simply pour, flip this up and the water would run down into the drain. Which brings a, up a question. Did they always have holding tanks on them or, or sometimes you didn't no. want to be where a trailer used to be? <laughs> well. This is called gray water, uh -huh. and gray water it's is okay from your water. sink, and it's soapy water. Uh, you could, they would, that would drain to the ground. On your uh, toilets, they had these, they were actually just a, a can, so in the, in the 30s, there was just a, a pot, so you carried that with you pretty much, and mm -hmm. there was this chemical you put in. Uh, later in the late 50s, early 60s, they started putting in the holding tanks, and, and uh, that would go down into a tank, and, and you'd uh, pull the drain, and dump it at a site. Uh, your trailers in the 50s, you'd go someplace at a campsite that had hookups. There would be a, there'd be a drain in the ground. You'd hook your trailer up, the hose up to it, and your, your uh, garden hose would hook into the trailer for the fresh water to run through. So as, as trailers became popular, entrepreneurs jumped right on this and saw, you know, we'll have a place for them to park overnight, we'll have a place to feed them, we'll have a place for them to dump their, their whatever. Uh, this all happened pretty quick. Correct. What happened was uh, the, um, when they started putting in drainage and everything else, that was a selling point to get more people to come to theirs sure. because they had, they had flowing running water and they had a place for your waste to go. So the guy who didn't keep up or who didn't have plumbing in his trailer park, his wouldn't get, you know, it wouldn't get filled up as quickly as the other guy. Mm -hmm. So as, as uh, progress went on, staying with it and moving up, as, as if you upgraded your place, you'd fill it up quicker. 